This video is updated to clarify the changes in the pneumatic drawbar. The current design utilizes a two-stack assembly where the previous design was a three-stack. This section starts at the six and a half minute mark and is timestamped for you below in the description. Let's install an ATC. Please read the operator manual that came with your product for all the warnings, cautions, the safety overview, air requirements, and the tools required for this installation. Prepare the machine. If there's a tool in the spindle, remove it. Remove any accessories or fixtures from the machine table. Center the table by typing in the center position command for your machine into the MDI DRO line, then press the enter key. Power off the machine and the PathPilot controller. Push in the emergency stop button on the operator box. From the PathPilot interface, select exit. Turn the main disconnect switch to off on the side of the electrical cabinet. Disassemble the power drawbar button. Disconnect the shop air from the machine. Remove the four M5 button head cap screws that secure the power drawbar button cover. Disconnect the air lines from the retract and extend ports on the power drawbar. And then from the air supply port on the power drawbar button. Using a three millimeter hex wrench, remove the two M4 socket head cap screws that secure the power drawbar button to the spindle head. Cut the cable ties that secure the air lines together. Remove the power drawbar button from the spindle head. Install the air cylinder. Secure the air cylinder to the ATC main assembly with the provided 12 mm hex wrench and the two M14 socket head cap screws. Connect the air lines from the ATC main assembly to the air cylinder. The short air line connects to the front of the cylinder and the long air line connects to the back of the cylinder. Mount the automatic tool changer bracket. There are four standoffs used to mount the ATC bracket to the column. Three are fixed and the fourth is tilting. Remove the flange nuts and the washers and set them aside. Remove the four set screws on the column with a flat blade screwdriver. These can be discarded. Install the tilting standoff in the top left location and the three fixed standoffs in the remaining spots. Securely tighten with a one and one half inch adjustable wrench. Place the ATC bracket onto the standoffs and hand tighten the washers and flange nuts removed earlier. Slide the bracket towards the front of the mill, then secure with a 13 mm socket. Make sure that the tilting standoff eccentric cam fits within the large slot on the ATC mounting bracket. Install the main assembly. Remove the four provided M8 socket head cap screws and washers from the bottom of the ATC electrical cabinet and set them aside for later use. Have an assistant help you lift the ATC main assembly onto the mounting bracket and align the locating pin. Secure the ATC main assembly to the mounting bracket with the four M8 socket head cap screws and washers you set aside earlier. Level the automatic tool changer. Start by pushing the tool tray towards the spindle. Make sure that the linear bearing on the ATC is flushed with the ATC main assembly. Find a straight rod between 8 and 12 inches long. Verify that it's straight by rolling it on a known flat surface. Then insert the alignment rod into a tool holder. Put the tool holder into the fork so that the groove in the tool holder slides into the fork and so that the drive slot aligns with the dog. Examine the perpendicularity in the Y direction. Place the square on the table and against the rod in the Y direction. Compare the rod's position to the vertical edge of the machinist's square. If the rod isn't square, use a 13 mm socket to loosen the flange nuts on the standoffs. Turn the tilting standoff with an adjustable wrench and slowly pivot the ATC until the rod is perpendicular to the vertical edge of the machinist's square. Tighten the flange nuts and re-examine the wide direction alignment. Repeat these steps if the rod isn't perpendicular to the machinist's square. Once the perpendicularity in Y is determined, you can now move on. Examine perpendicularity in the X direction. Place the square against the rod in the X direction. If the rod isn't square, use a five millimeter hex wrench to loosen the two socket head cap screws on the linear rails. Slowly pivot the rail up or down until the rod is perpendicular to the vertical edge of the machinist square. Tighten the socket head cap screws. Re-examine the alignment of the ATC in the X direction. Repeat these steps if the rod isn't perpendicular to the machinist square. Examine the alignment of the carousel door opening. Remove the tool holder from the fork and set it aside. Power on the machine and the path pilot controller. Turn the main disconnect switch to on. Twist out the emergency stop button. Press the reset button. Bring the machine out of reset and reference it. 
Verify that the ATC is all the way forward, and then slowly move the Z-axis down by using the page down key to examine the clearance of the carousel door opening. Make sure that the carousel door opening is approximately equal to the front, back, and left of the spindle mounting flange. If it isn't, then loosen the four socket head cap screws that secure the ATC main assembly to the mounting bracket with a 6mm hex wrench. If the carousel door opening is contacting the front or back of the spindle, pivot the ATC on the locating pin until either side is evenly spaced around the spindle. If the carousel door opening is contacting the left, loosen the four flange nuts that attach the mounting bracket to the column to move the bracket forward or backward. Tighten the socket head cap screw and the flange nuts. Move the tool tray to its retracted position. Send to the machine table by typing the following command in the MDI line, then select the enter key. Power off the machine and the PathPilot controller. Push in the emergency stop button. From the PathPilot interface, select exit. Turn the main disconnect switch to off. Make air connections. Cut the cable ties that secure the ATC cables and plastic tubes together. Route the loose ends of the two quarter inch plastic tubes connected to the ATC main assembly through the enclosure knockout, up the energy chain, and towards the power drawbar. Then, pull the airline from the FRL back through the energy chain. Trim and connect the loose ends of the quarter inch plastic tubes in the following order. Connect the retract airline to the bottom push to connect elbow on the power drawbar. Connect the advance airline to the second from the bottom push to connect elbow. In a few cases, the advance airline will have a T-elbow on the top drawbar cylinder. This is also perfectly fine, but the vast majority of you will see it as demonstrated in the video. Connect the air supply line from the FRL to the air import on the ATC main assembly. Reconnect the air supply. And be sure to keep your hands away from the ATC as there is a potential the ATC could move once the air is connected. Make electrical connections. Route the ATC power cable and the USB cable out and enclosure knockout. Connect the ATC power cable to the ATC power connector. Route the ATC's USB cable through the stand's left access hole, then into any open USB port on the PathPilot controller. Verify the installation. Power on the machine and the PathPilot controller. Turn the main disconnect switch to on. Twist out the emergency stop button. Press the reset button on the operator box. Bring the machine out of reset and reference it. If you have not done so yet, you must make sure that the PathPilot controller is up to date with the latest version of PathPilot. On the settings tab, select the ATC radio button. The ATC tab appears. If prompted, you may need to update the firmware on the ATC. Load an empty tool holder into the spindle by pressing and holding the collet open button, inserting a tool and releasing the button to secure the tool. In the RPM DRO field, type 1000, then select the enter key. Select the forward button and the spindle starts. From the status tab, make sure that the VFD running light comes on. Select the stop button and the spindle stops. Now if the VFD running light didn't come on on your status page, please make sure to reach out to support at tormach.com so we can help you through it. Make final alignments to the automatic tool changer. On the ATC tab, Select Ref Tool Tray. If you haven't already done so, load a tool onto the spindle. Manually rotate the spindle two revolutions to orient the encoder. Disconnect the air from the machine. While manually advancing the tool tray towards the spindle, slowly jog the Z-axis up or down until the groove in the fork aligns with the groove in the tool holder. If the pocket is out of alignment with the tool, you may need to use the plus plus or minus minus to bring it into alignment. To do this, from the ATC tab, either select the minus minus to step the tool tray counterclockwise or the plus plus to step the tool tray clockwise. Verify that the tool and its drive dogs are fully seated into the fork by fully advancing the ATC into its tray load position. In the status tab, verify that the ATC tray in LED is still illuminated. If the LED isn't illuminated, examine the tool tray it may have exceeded the tray-in sensor during the previous step. On the ATC tab, select the TC POS button, then select OK. The tool change position has now been set. Select the TC M19 button. Using the tool, rotate the spindle clockwise in the fork, then select OK. Rotate the spindle counterclockwise in the fork, then select OK. 
Manually move the ATC back to its retracted position. Reconnect the air, but make sure your hands are away from the ATC as there's a possibility it might move. Remove the tool from the spindle. Move the Z-axis all the way up using the page up key or by typing the following into the DRO. On the ATC tab, select go to tray load position, then manually load a tool into the fork. Orient the spindle by typing M19R0Q10 into the MDI line, then select the enter key. Ensure the collet is open by clicking on the collet open close button until the open light is illuminated. Verify that the spindle is concentric with the tool by slowly jogging the z-axis down and depending on the result, doing one of the following. Determine if the tray must move left or right. Use two wrenches to loosen the jam nut on the end of the cylinder rod, making sure you don't spin the rod end when adjusting the jam nut. Then, either turn the rod end clockwise or counterclockwise until the tool is concentric with the spindle. Once finished, tighten the jam nut. Now remember, don't adjust this over 100 thousandths of an inch. You could exceed your tray in sensor, causing your ATC not to detect arrival and causing problems down the line. Adjust for the ATC's backlash by lightly pressing forward and backward on the carousel. Then, from the ATC tab, select the plus plus or minus minus until there's equal space on the front and back of the BT30 taper. Verify from the status tab, the ATC tray and LED is still illuminated. If the LED isn't illuminated, examine the tool tray. It may have exceeded the tray and sensor during adjustment in the previous step. Repeat the adjustments until the tool's shank is concentric with the collet in the spindle. Move the z-axis all the way up by using the page up key or by typing the following into the DRO. Then select the enter key. Remove the tool from the ATC, then select retract. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you enjoy the videos that we do, please support us by subscribing and clicking on the bell icon to receive notifications.